Coast, uh, the Admiral, Bill Stumblefield. Billy, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Just thankful we do not live in the Big Bend country of Florida. Tough times down they there. They got hit awful hard last Helene time. is uh, the latest, uh, and we'll get, uh, we're getting drizzled from that now, and we'll get uh, into the high school football Friday night games. will be a bit wet tonight, too. Yeah, 20-foot storm, storm surge is really unheard of. Mm-hmm. Uh, you hear 10 to 12 feet. Bonnie and I lived in Miami for several years, and we lived in uh, in the Miami area. We lived in the highest part around, and that was 15 feet above sea level, and we thought we were quite safe. That would have not been safe against a 20-foot storm surge. Really unbelievable how much power that has. And that will work its way up through Georgia. Exactly. And yeah. uh, into uh, Tennessee, I understand, yeah, as well. Yeah, not far from my hometown in Tennessee. Yeah. Now, obviously, the storm surge, and they'll go with the, uh, a little bit of uh, wind, but most of the rain through there, so localized flooding. So. Our first guest on the program is Colonel Lene Johnson. She is a candidate for the Jefferson County Commission, this time out of the Harpers Ferry District. That's a uh, seat uh, right now where she'll be opposing uh, Pasha Majdi, who we've had on the program before, and Pasha, of course, was appointed to the Jefferson County Commission after the debacle with the two commissioners who were dismissed from the Jefferson County Commission. Uh, it wouldn't be fun if it was a normal day. So uh, let's say good morning to the colonel right now and welcome her back to the program. You were a candidate previously four years ago against Steve Stolifer representing the Democratic Party. Lene, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Great. And you are doing? I am fine, and thank you very much for inviting me. Any trouble finding the place? Oh, my goodness. This is a crazy. <laughs> Anyone out there in television and radio land, do your um, pre-driving first to find where this place is. Practice run. I'm telling you, it's back up in the cut. We're in God's country. <laughs> you got deer, box turtle out there, turkey. I know. That's why I have to wear my tennis shoes just in case a turkey came out and ran me down the road. <laughs> I think they're fairly yeah. well mannered. The turkey. No, we absolutely there. not. No, you don't think so. Uh, yeah. No, a fem- a, a male turkey will be sitting on the uh, the nest, um, uh, uh, and they can be very aggressive if you get close to the nest. But here, uh, have you run into trouble with the turkey here? My my mother did years ago, and she was uh, an ill person that time, uh, terminal stage of cancer. But she wanted she was out walking, and came face to face with this male turkey, and the male turkey was not about to give her any slack at all and she was a, a frail person at that stage and she she got away from the turkey but the turkey was was taking no prisoners so. now, those are those tennessee turkeys the west virginia no 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 quiet. this no this is the west virginia turkey oh, yeah this is all our right. place yeah i stand corrected <laughs> yeah. i stand corrected colonel tell us about your military background well i started off in the air force and then i Got out of the Air Force and got married and had a child and went back into the military. Now, this is really a strange story. I used to be a government agent. And when I lived in Oregon, I had a police officer say, well, you know, women can't do this and women can't do that. It's like, oh, my, why do you tell me that? So I ended up joining back into the um, the Army National Guard in Oregon. And I did my 23 years in the military. And you've been to war. I have been to war. I spent a year in Iraq, and that was definitely an experience to behold. Would I do it again? No, but I enjoyed it while I was there. What were you in charge of while you were in Iraq? Well, believe it or not, I'm a military police officer. Mm -hmm. I am an expert marksman, and um, I have lots of guns in my house. Bill, we won't be breaking into <laughs> the colonel's house tonight, will we? We'll look for that turkey. We're not about to go to the lady's house. Send that ill-tempered turkey her way. <laughs> yeah. And we got Thanksgiving dinner shortly thereafter. Yeah. When did, when did your service conclude? Oh, let's see. 2000 and... Oh, my gracious, you're going to date me. 2005, four. Somewhere around there. I, yeah. Okay, yeah. very good. Yeah. And uh, when did you move to West Virginia? I moved to West Virginia. My last duty station was at Fort Detrick. Okay. And, you know, they give you that three months to live in the hotel till you can find a place to live. And naturally, you know, that's in Frederick. And so I was out riding around looking for a place to live. And a friend of mine said, well, hey, you know, the casino has entertainment. 
and we came up here and we went to one of their shows and on the way back to Frederick I said oh look there are houses for sale went around the corner saw this house and said oh this place is fabulous been there ever since so I've been there since 2007 and what made you decide to run for office well, the first time that I ran for office was because I was coming out of the military and I was coming out of working and I was retiring for my second time. And I was working with nonprofits and we were trying to get information to and from the county commission about doing things in the community. And one of the gentlemen that I was working with decided to say, hey, why don't you run for county commission? I went, oh, I've never done that. So I did. And naturally, I lost against my um, Steve Stolliper. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what got me into politics. So obviously, it's been a little difficult for Democrats in West Virginia, and especially the Eastern Panhandle, too. What makes you think that you can win a run this time as a registered Democrat? Well, I think we don't have a problem with Democrats in the county. We have a no no voting problem. People need to get out of their houses and come out and vote. A lot of people think that, oh, well, my vote's not going to count. But it does. Because if you look at some of the current um, races that have been run, people have won by three votes mm -hmm. or one vote. So I would recommend and I would say to those Democrats that are in the county, come on out. We're worth voting for. We're worth that change. Let's talk about some of the issues that you're campaigning on. And one of the biggest issues in Jefferson County is, of course, solar and solar farms mm -hmm. and fields. And your thoughts on how to, if you even want to, restrict some of the growth of these solar farms. Well, from what I understand right now, they have just approved an additional five solar farms in Jefferson County. I don't know whether or not we can stop it or we can change it. We'll have to look and see what we can do. And I understand that the um, Jefferson County Development Authority has that purview to move things around. I am not on the commission currently right now, so I really don't think they're going to give me a copy of the contract so I can say, oh, can you move this or can this setback be done? Have you talked to the residents that are right next to where this solar farm is going to be placed? So I, I really don't know mm -hmm. until I can see what we can change or whether we can amend it or we can stop it. What are your thoughts personally in regards to what you prefer or don't prefer with solar farms uh, in general? That's a good question. Personally, uh, they are very much an eyesore. As I'm driving across from where I live off of Keys Ferry Road over to Route 9, the old Route 9, and I'm like, oh my God, there's another one, and there's another one. Look at this one. I mean, from what I understand, that, they're, that they take the topsoil from the land and it ends up in the water system. Um, it's like you're ruining our water and and do I like it personally no they're an eyesore mm -hmm. bill, now, I, I don't have to live next door to him not, not yet that's true <laughs> yeah. bill yeah uh, where do you see Jefferson County going forward and bring business to the area I'm, I'm going back to Rockwall uh, and Rockwall was resisted with uh, uh, with quite a bit of act, act, activity. Uh, solar farms are being resisted. Where, where do you see that Jefferson County will be going in the future? Uh, I, I think it has a great opportunity for businesses to come in. Give me some examples. What type of businesses? Uh, more light businesses. Um, I'm thinking things such as, I know I'm an avid golfer, and I'd like to see them put in a, a golf, top golf. It, something of that nature that's going to bring people to the county and also not destroy our natural resources. Yeah, uh, and I've heard examples such as golf courses before, but they only uh, employ a very small number of people. Uh, to get a vibrant economy, you've got to have businesses that will employ several people. And what type of businesses would they be? They would be extremely light industry. So you're talking industries that would make 
products that would be usable, um, hand lotion. I can't think of anything else right now. Okay. But they would be light industry. Mm -hmm. Such as we have Procter and Gamble in uh, in Berkeley County. That's uh, they they would not fall in the category. You mentioned hand lotion. They they make hand lotion. Oh, do they? they yeah, okay, they all right. I mean, just yeah. something that yeah. I mean, jewelry. I mean, yeah. things of those natures that would that would enhance and not take over and ruin our natural resources. Well, your biggest business in Jefferson County are building residential houses. And you see subdevelopments going everywhere. That takes over your natural resources, and they and the return on dollar is not nearly that much as would be say for for commercial businesses. That's exactly true. Yeah. And then one of the things you would look at that is whether or not those places that are building those homes are they looking at our water resources. That's my biggest issue with that is. What are you, how are you going to go ahead and build all these houses and make sure that we have enough water to fill what we currently need and what you're going to need for these new homes? It's interesting you say that because you're the third person we've had on in the last couple of three weeks, and everyone has mentioned groundwater as an area of concern. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I uh, in in Berkeley County, we've taken steps to protect the groundwater, but I do not think you have in Jefferson County. Well, then maybe we should go over to Berkeley County and get your rules and regulations on how we should do it. I think you probably should, yeah. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think that we look at being able to be inclusive and collaborate with our areas around us in order to get a lot of things accomplished. And we should differentiate between what we mean by water, whether we're talking about the... The, what the county provides or the city provides, uh, some of that water comes from, from the Potomac River. Uh, or the, uh, the individual homes, which the bulk of that comes from, from individual wells. So, okay. Yeah, so. I, I don't have a differentiation yeah. for yeah, you. Okay. Now, uh, you're running against Pasha. Uh, yeah, what's the difference between you and he as far as platforms we used to say there's a common statement we're asking you're asking the residents of jefferson county to to fire pasha and to hire you why would you would they want to do that okay it sounds like a good idea to me <laughs> yeah, but why <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, because i'm looking at the the whole of okay. Jefferson County. Yeah. I'm not just looking at the specific areas. I'm thinking that we need to be more transparent with the things that we're doing there. We need to be a little bit more cooperative. I believe that we need to bring in more experts in the areas that we want to move forward. What is the vision? What? Where do they want to go? How do we want to make this work? And we have to do it with transparency. We have to involve our people in the community. When you say bring experts in, what do you mean? Well, let's look at the environmental area. We're just sitting here talking about natural resources. I'll be the first to tell you I am not a solar expert. I am not a water expert. But if I can bring those individuals in to have a discussion about how this is going to affect us, whether it's going to affect us if we do this or how it's not going to affect us if we do that. We need to have those answers up front. So you're talking about bringing them in as a consultant as opposed to an employee. Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. okay. yes. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be a bad idea either. Let's hire people with that experience mm -hmm. too instead of just picking people that we like. Sure. So we mentioned water, we mentioned solar panels, mm -hmm. uh, we mentioned business. Mm -hmm. uh, what else is there in Jefferson County that you see that needs to be addressed? Well, one of the things, and, and I know I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to... We're look, among friends. <laughs> yes. I'm going to say that we need to be able to, let's talk about, and I know this isn't an issue that the county commission can work on, is um, you know that if I was pregnant, I could not have a child in Jefferson County. I have to go to Berkeley County, I got to go to Winchester, Frederick, because we have no OBGYN facilities for women in Jefferson County. And I think that's a big issue. That's nothing that the com commission can work on, but I just think it needs to be a talking point out there so we can get that service back into our county. So the Jefferson, the hospital in Jefferson County, you can't... Have a baby. Really? Yeah. I, 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 this is just my 
presumption is that it's, um, I think they're scared of, you know, they were taking people to court. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's talk broadband. Oh, right. That's yeah. one of your talking points. It is. Right. For getting elected. What can you do as a county commissioner to help the broadband process speed along? That's a very good question, and I believe that we need to work with the municipalities and our magisterial districts to try to find out what it is they need to get broadband. There are still places that are in um, Jefferson County that they don't have it at all. They can't even get the Internet. I look at it from my military aspects of it. There is a hierarchical way in which things should be done. You have these counties and municipalities that are independent, and they have their own councils where people come in and talk to them about what their issues are. So why can we not work with those individuals in our magisterial districts and talk about resolutions of how we're going to solve that? Because I may not know the specifics of that area, but those individuals do. Those mayors know what they need in order to operate for individuals in their community. So we need to bring that information together. We need to collaboratively work together about solving these issues. So until they tell me what their problem is or what their issue is about moving broadband out, then uh, we'll be able to address that. You're saying there's no communication between the county commission and the uh, uh, the mayors and city governments. City governments. Yeah. I didn't say there was, and I just said it could be better. Well, it always can be better, yeah. But that's that's not really the question. The question is: is there a lack of communication now? Are they talking? Is it effective communication? I don't think so. That's my personal opinion. I I sit on the Charlestown mayors for um, community operations, and he's trying to work with the, um, well, I guess he's, I, he hasn't put it before the county, his council yet, so I really shouldn't talk about it. But looking at how they can improve that communication, I don't think it's there currently, and I think it can yeah. be better. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm pushing back a little bit because uh, Probably everyone that comes that's running for office says two things. Mm -hmm. You can count it. One is transparency. Yes. We've got to improve transparency. Everybody says it. The other one says we've got to improve communication. Mm -hmm. But when you push them on it, rarely do they have specifics of where communication is not is failing or even more so where they're not getting transparency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's try to be a little bit more specific on that topic then. I believe that in order for us to work together as a county, mm -hmm. that we need to listen and hear what each one of these magisterial districts are talking about, each one of these mayors. So if I don't know that Harper's Ferry is trying to work at being an individual organization to where they can do their own thing, without having to come to the county. For example, I, I looked at it as being an HOA. You know, they can get their own trash pickup. They don't have to wait for people to send their information into the, into the county or to the state in order to get things done. What can we do to help them move forward on that? I don't know. I don't know because I'm not sitting there on that position now, but I don't think the communication is there. I really don't hear a lot about what's happening in Shepherdstown or what's happening in Middleway whenever you go to the county commission. I don't see those things as being open door policies to where they can come in and talk and say, listen, these are things that we need to do to move forward. What can you do to help us? There's some talk about closing a school in Jefferson County. Have you been involved in that discussion? North Jefferson, I North think it Jefferson, is. North Jefferson, yeah. Um, I have been involved in that discussion, uh, in the, only in the sense that I don't believe, this is me personally, that that school should close. They're talking about how the enrollment is down and that is continuing to go down but they're using statistics from 10 or 15 years ago when the county did have low enrollments in school um, the school board person 
talked the other day about how they made the impact fees $1 for the schools, and I talked about how we need to look at that specifically. What is that land going to be used for? What is that building going to be used for? Why are we displacing over 300 kids just to do what with that property? The parents were talking about how they have an excellent um what do they call it, diverse for kids who have situations and issues and problems. I shouldn't say problems. But if you have a program that's working and the parents are all for it, why would you close down a school? Why would you make another school have too many kids in it? Is there a purpose for that building or that land that we don't know about? Is there anything behind the we, – we've, we've talked – we've done interviews on this with folks in Jefferson County, but I'm not clear if there's – a I don't desire know. for that land of anywhere. I really don't know. And those were my questions. Those were like, what is the purpose of this land going to be used for? You know, is it in conjunction with Rockwool? Because it's right across the street. You know, when they put that in, they said there was nothing going to happen to that school, that it was going to stay there. It was going to be in that community. And remember, that community is a underdeveloped, not underdeveloped. Well, let's just say that it's um, not poverty, but it's a low-income area. And those people need to be able to have the school there to be able to support their community. We're already talking about the fact that we don't have child care in Jefferson County. So why would you take away a school, move those children out, put them in another school to where the class is now, instead of having 15 students in a class, now you've got 30 in a class. Did you speak uh, uh, at school board when they had the open here in a couple of nights ago? I did. Good. I okay. did. I did. Well, good for you. So. Well, well, thank you. Colonel, I have a minute left. That minute is yours for the microphone to tell folks why they should vote for you for the Jefferson County Commission. Well, hi, everyone. And my name is Lene Johnson. And I am thrilled to be able to say to you that I am running for county commission in Jefferson County. I am committed to transparency, honesty, and being able to work with not only our constituents, but also our local government so that we can bring about and move Jefferson County forward. How can people find out more about your campaign? Facebook page, website? I have all of those things. If you want to be able to get additional information, you can look on Johnson, the number for Jefferson, at yahoo.com to send me an email. Or you can go out to Facebook. Again, that's Johnson for Jefferson. If you want to check my website, that would be www.johnsonforjefferson.org. Thank you for the surprise visit. I thought you would be doing this over the phone. It's nice to have you in the studio. And, oh, thank and you. And you brought in enough notes so we could be here for four days. I know. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? If you want to keep going, I'm available. We'll uh, be glad to see you again at our forum. All right, We're doing yes. two political forums, October 15 and October 22. More details on that in the lineups uh, to come as the days get closer. Colonel Johnson, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're quite Thanks, welcome. Sir.